Access your free language gifts of the month right now. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the making a phone call cheat sheet. Want to be able to talk on the phone in your target language? Then this conversation cheat sheet will help you do just that. You'll learn all the basic phrases, questions, and answers you'll need when making a call. Second, want to know the learning hacks, motivational tips, and success strategies for learning a language in 2020? Then you'll want this exclusive 52-page ebook. Download it now for free before we take it down. Third, words and phrases for the dentist. Learn how to schedule a checkup, talk about a toothache, and much more with this one-minute vocab lesson. Fourth, can you talk about your zodiac sign? Then this next one minute lesson is for you if you wanna learn. You'll learn how to say the 12 signs in your target language. Fifth, the 32 words you'll need for language learning. Noun, verb, adjective, sentence, grammar. Can you say these in your target language? If not, you'll want this quick one minute lesson. Sixth, free audiobooks for our members only. Unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, take the 12 month challenge and get 12 months of premium or premium plus at up to 45% off. So to get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Stop them tourist attractions in Egypt. Let's get started. Abu Simbel. Abu Simbel. Abu Simbel. Abu Simbel. For example, you can say, Rohta Abu Simbel Aplikida? Rohta Abu Simbel Aplikida? Which means, have you been to Abu Simbel before? Abu Simbel is such a huge temple, and actually, fun fact, Abu Simbel Temple uh, was actually going to drown when Egypt decided to build the Aswan Dam in the 80s in order to prevent such thing. Uh, Egypt had to remove the whole temple from its place to another place. So if you ever go to Abu Simbel again, it's actually not its original place. It has been relocated. Ahramotic Giza. Giza pyramids. Ahramotic Giza. Giza pyramids. For example, you can say, Ana tsawarta gamba ahramotic Giza. Ana tsawarta gamba ahramotic Giza. I took a picture next to the pyramids of Giza. And I have never taken a picture next to the pyramids of Giza. Because I've never been there. Actually, I live like half an hour away from it. I can see it from everywhere, so I've never felt the need to go and like see it from up close, but I will one day. Like, I have to. El Mat'haf al Masri, Egyptian Museum. The next one is like I've spent lots of time there. El Mat'haf al Masri, the Egyptian Museum. El Mat'haf al Masri, from Medan al Tahrir. El Mat'haf al Masri, from Medan al Tahrir. The Egyptian Museum is located in Tahrir Square. Gama Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali Mosque. Gama Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali's Mosque. And it's one of the most beautiful mosques in, in the whole world. Gama Muhammad Ali, Fuqalat Salah al Din. Gama Muhammad Ali, Fuqalat Salah al Din. Muhammad Ali's Mosque is located in Salah al Din's citadel. In front of it, there is a huge park called Al Azhar Park. It's also built on the Islamic theme, and from the park, you can see both the citadel and the mosque, and it's it's like utterly beautiful, especially at night. Su Khan al Khalili. Khan al Khalili Market. Ah, Khan al Khalili. I, I bought this from Khan al Khalili. This. Su Khan al Khalili. Khan al Khalili Market. For example, you can say, Hashtari hadayat iskareya min su Khan al Khalili. Hashtari hadayat iskareya min su Khan al Khalili. I'll buy seven years from Khan al Khalili Market. And in Khan al Khalili, you can buy oriental souvenirs as uh, well as um, statues and uh, t-shirts and so on or you can buy like really beautiful what do you call like jewelry you can really buy beautiful jewelry for a very it's not so expensive Ma'bad al-Luqsur Luqsur temple Ma'bad al-Luqsur Luqsur temple for example Lama kuntu fi al-Luqsur zurtu Ma'bad al-Luqsur Lama kuntu fi al-Luqsur zurtu Ma'bad al-Luqsur When I was in Luqsur I visited the Luqsur temple I've never been there, but they say it's beautiful. Ma'bad al-Karnak, Karnak Temple. Ma'bad al-Karnak, Karnak Temple. For example, in Naharda han roh Ma'bad al-Karnak. In Naharda han roh Ma'bad al-Karnak. Today we will visit the Karnak Temple. Maktabat al-Iskandariya, Biblioteca Alexandria. 
مكتبة الإسكندرية بيبلوثيكا ألكساندريا For example, you can say مكتبة الإسكندرية رائعة مكتبة الإسكندرية رائعة بيبلوثيكا ألكساندريا is amazing واحد سيوا سيوا أويسس واحد سيوا سيوا أويسس For example, واحد سيوا فيها أنقى مياه جوفية واحد سيوا فيها أنقى مياه جوفية سيوا أويسس has the purest underground water الغردعة هرقادة Oh, I've been there. الغردعة الغردعة هرقادة الغردعة جوا حلو قوي في الشتاء الغردعة جوا حلو قوي في الشتاء Hergada's weather is amazing in the winter. Like it's really warm. Like in February or something, you can still go swimming and like it's really good. How to improve your language and speak more through preparation. Do you think it's possible to speak more of your target language by preparing lines ahead of time? Today you're going to learn one why you should prepare for conversations ahead of time, and two, how you can prepare for conversations in your target language. If you've always wanted to speak more of your target language, but didn't know how, this tactic will give you more to talk about. How to improve your language and speak more through preparation. Okay, let's get into part one. Why you should prepare for conversations ahead of time. If you're a beginner, you can probably relate to this. When it comes to speaking, you tend to run out of things to say. And that's because you don't know enough of the language to express yourself. And that's where preparation comes in. You may think that the conversations we have in our daily lives are spontaneous, that you can't prepare for them. You're right to an extent. But imagine meeting someone for the first time. Both of you will go through some common questions and phrases like, what's your name? My name is, where are you from? and how long have you been studying the language? As a language learner, you'll have these kinds of conversations with almost every native you meet, guaranteed. They'll always ask you about how long and how you've been learning. And even with your friends, some conversations start the same way. For example, you say things like, hey, how are you? How are things? How was your weekend? My weekend was good, and you? Let's say you went to a restaurant this weekend, and now you want to talk about it. Well, that allows you to prepare and learn some phrases, like, I went to a restaurant. The restaurant had delicious food. The point is, some questions and phrases come up often in conversations, so it makes total sense to master them ahead of time. And you can always plan ahead and prepare for things you want to talk about. When it comes time to speak, you know what to say, how to respond, and you don't run out of talking points as quickly. So, how do you prepare? Let's jump into part two. The first thing you can do to prepare is check out our 25 Questions You Need to Know lesson series. This series is specifically designed to help you with the first-time conversations you'll have with native speakers. You'll learn the 25 most common questions and answers used in conversations. Just listen to the lessons, repeat out loud, then put what you learn to use. These will serve as talking points so you can keep your conversations going. Number two. Print out the curriculum for this lesson series so you can review all of the lessons at once. The curriculum gives you the lines and vocabulary used in all lessons up front, so you can use this to review key questions and responses. This will allow you to control conversations and ask questions instead of just having the native speaker ask you all the questions. In other words, you'll sound like a fluid, confident, and experienced speaker. Number three, check out our printable conversation cheat sheets. This is another free resource that gives you lines and words for all kinds of topics. For example, talking about hobbies, your family, and much more. Number four, ask yourself, what do you want to talk about? Come up with some topics, and for each topic, write out potential questions and phrases that would come up in a conversation. For example, if you want to talk about restaurants, you can have lines like, my favorite restaurant is, my favorite food is, what's your favorite restaurant? and then run these lines through a translation app. It won't be perfect, but it'll give you lines to use that you can correct later. Number five, look for lessons that are related to your topics with our lesson library. On our site, we have hundreds of lessons that teach you conversations. So if you're looking for lessons related to restaurants and food, you'll get all kinds of conversations that you can use for yourself. And number six, if you're a Premium Plus user, get in touch with your teacher via My Teacher and try a conversation with them. They'll help you every step of the way, correct your writing, and give you the lines to use in a conversation. That way, you can prepare ahead of time, and when it comes time to speak, you'll know what to say.
All right, everyone, here's a challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute video or audio clip. Tell us, what's your language learning goal for 2020? If you do, you'll win a one month premium plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account, then fill out the form. Attach the audio or video file and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode, so a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to start conversations, talking points for language learners. Most people don't like to hear this, but consistent hard work is one of the biggest factors in your language learning success. The course or method you choose makes a difference too, but at the end of the day, you ride or die by the work you put in. The quantity of time spent studying language doesn't necessarily determine the quality of your study. Spending three hours a day watching movies doesn't help you learn much if you're not actively engaging with the language. In this video, we'll talk about three ways to actively engage your mind while studying a new language. Number one, think of your brain as a muscle. You're probably familiar with the phrase, feel the burn, or maybe no pain, no gain. If you've been to your local gym recently, there's a chance you might have heard one of these phrases or seen them plastered on a wall. There's an idea in the world of sports and workouts that the discomfort you feel when running, pumping iron, or doing some other physical activity is what brings results. During a healthy workout, the muscles of the body are affected at a microscopic level. The discomfort you feel is your muscles being pushed to their limit. It's the limit pushing that strengthens your muscles so that over time, your performance increases. In the context of language learning, it's helpful to think of your brain as a muscle. Just as we need to push our physical limits when exercising, we also need to push our mental limits when learning a foreign language. Have you ever studied or practiced your target language in a way that left you tired or even exhausted? If so, you've experienced what it's like to push your brain out of its linguistic comfort zone. Number two, practice active listening. One of the easiest ways to push your language skills is to practice active listening. Active listening is when you listen to someone speaking your target language and you do your best to understand what you hear. The best way to accomplish this is by using audio that you can't completely understand on the first listen. Preferably, you want to use audio that has subtitles or transcripts for you to double check your understanding after you listen to it. You can use movies, YouTube clips, or even our language program, which has very useful transcripts for each lesson. During a practice session, you should listen to the audio several times. The first time around, it's okay if little to no words stick out to you. Simply make a mental note of any words or sounds you recognize. The second time you listen, you're likely to recognize a little more than you did the previous time. Expect similar results with your third or even fourth time listening. After you've hit the ceiling of words you can decipher, go ahead and look at the language subtitles or transcripts. Listen to the audio again, reading along with the text. Odds are that you will see words in the text you know, but didn't hear correctly. You're also likely to encounter words that are new to you completely. As you play back the audio and read along, try to guess what these words mean from the context of the words around them. After you've read along a couple times, feel free to look up the remaining unfamiliar words in a dictionary or translator app. This active listening exercise routine is a great way to increase your listening and comprehension skills while picking up some new vocabulary along the way. It also allows you to learn new words in context, which itself is a powerful method to help you retain what you study. Number three. Practicing with native speakers. Practicing with native speakers is the epitome of pushing your language skills. Using what you know to communicate in real time is where the rubber really meets the road. Try to connect with a native speaker on a weekly basis. Regularity is what makes the difference when you're learning a foreign language. If you live in a large metropolitan area, then there's a significant chance that there are some local native speakers nearby. Try hitting up a local language exchange or meetup group to make the necessary connections. If you're unable to find a practice partner locally, then you can take your search online. There are a number of sites out there that help you find and connect with other language learners from around the world. There are tons of language learners around the world who have learned or are learning a second language. You're likely to find someone who knows your target language and is looking to improve their own language skills as well. 
Learning a new language isn't always easy, but it's the discomfort that comes with pushing your ability in the language that produces results in your studies. Don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. The further away you get from your native language, the closer you'll be to attaining fluency. Also remember that language learning is in every way a lot like an adventure. There will be fun times and times when it feels like you're swimming up the proverbial stream. It's by keeping your head up long enough through these ups and downs that you will experience the priceless satisfaction that comes from learning a foreign language. Just keep moving forward. Let's be honest, it's difficult to learn a new language. If you're new to a language, it's going to take consistent and concentrated effort to start using the language fluently. However, this fact shouldn't discourage you. While learning a new language is hard, it's far from impossible. In this video, we'll outline five tips you can use to jumpstart your language learning. Follow these pointers to learn your target language in a way that is efficient and effective. Number one, limit your native language use when practicing. The idea here is that when you practice with native speakers, you do your best to refrain from using your native language. This is generally harder the less you know, but if you can manage to stick to this rule, you'll reap some huge rewards. If you commit to a no native language practice session, it's not going to be easy. Most likely, there will be some frustrating, if not painstakingly difficult moments where you either have trouble understanding the person you're talking to or you can't say what you want to say. It's precisely in these moments that your language learning muscles are built up to capacity. The process really isn't all that different from working out in the gym. Just replace the physical burn of lifting weights for the mental burn of thinking in a new language. In the end, if there's no pain, there's no gain. Obviously, this no native language rule doesn't have to be written in stone. There are times when it's more beneficial to break out of the target language box and have something explained to you in your native language. However, this should definitely be the exception rather than the standard. Number two, have set times to practice speaking throughout the week. Now that we've discussed a good way to practice speaking, let's delve a bit into when to speak. One of the best commitments you can keep while learning a new language is to set aside specific times to practice speaking the language on a weekly basis. Ideally, these speaking sessions are on set days at specific times and form part of your weekly routine. If you don't make it a point to set aside specific practice times, you run the risk of your language practice falling through the cracks of your busy schedule. I recommend writing down your practice times and hanging it somewhere you can always see it. You could also input the times into your phone and set an alarm. The point is to remind yourself of your commitment every day so that it doesn't fall by the wayside. Number three, get picky about vocabulary. Whether you practice with a podcast, a friend at a coffee shop, or a teacher, you're going to run into a flood of new and unfamiliar vocabulary. Despite your best efforts, it's unlikely that you'll be able to pin down every new word or phrase you hear and study it later. Thus, you should pick and choose which new words you focus on. The defining quality of each new word you learn should be its practicality. The more useful a word or phrase is to you in a conversation, the more important it is that you learn it. Don't feel like you have to cram the entirety of your target language into one week of study. Take it one step at a time. A few practical words here, some more there. Before you know it, you'll see your vocabulary improve. Number four, write and practice short monologues. This tip can be a lot of fun. Begin by selecting a topic you enjoy discussing. Then, simply write out a short monologue or speech on the subject in your target language. The first thing you'll notice while doing this will likely be the holes in your grammar and vocabulary. But when you try to write out your thoughts in a foreign language, you might inevitably hit roadblocks. You might not be able to think of a word or know how to formulate a specific idea or opinion yet. This can be great because these holes are the exact areas where you should focus your studies. You can bring up these problem areas in your next lesson or browse through your favorite language course or textbook in order to find the answer. The constant process of finding these language holes and filling them is what keeps you moving along the path to fluency. Once you finish your short text, it's a great idea to practice reciting it or even memorizing it. The memorization will help you internalize the new grammar and vocabulary you've learned. Reciting it will get your tongue and mouth used to the sounds. Number five, keep an up-to-date list on what you want to learn. Throughout your studies, you should always have a sort of language shopping list. As you practice and study, you will most likely come across things you'd like to be able to say, but don't know how to yet, especially if you follow our previous tip. Write this wish list down. 
It's one thing to learn the vocabulary you pick up via a course or podcast, both of which are great. It's a bit different when your vocabulary gets personal. Learn the words that matter to you, either because they're practical or because you simply find them interesting. The more relevant the vocabulary, the more likely you are to retain it. Some people might tell you it's impossible to learn a new language for whatever reason, but it's important to remember that the way you study and engage with a language greatly affects how quickly or effectively you learn it. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.